The NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Ti and 4090 graphics cards are going to be the next-gen flagships for the green team, ushering in performance levels never before seen in the PC gaming segment. And here's everything from specs, price, and performance that you need to know. This was updated and is as of 5, or I guess, uh, what is this? The 19th. Yes, as of the 19th. The NVIDIA RTX 3090 series proved that the green team can go to the extreme lengths to secure their lead in the PC graphics segment. Labeled as BF GPU, a new breed of enthusiasts in Ultimate Graphics cards, these provide the best performance possible with the best possible PC gaming features in a package that's next to none. NVIDIA's direction with the BF GPU was to design a graphics card not just for the ultimate gamer, but also for the professional content creators too, too, who also want to have the best graphics card performance at hand to power the next generation of AAA gaming titles with superb visuals and insane fluidity, blah, 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 blah. We should expect similar things with the next flagship is what they say. So let's get into the specifications, starting with the GPU configuration. Copite 7 Kimmy compares the top 8102 GPU to various other GPUs from the green team. These include the Gaming Focus Ampere GA102 and Turing TU102, while there's also the HPC focused Hopper GH100 and Ampere GA100 added to the list. I'll only compare the AD102 to its gaming predecessor since the HPC focused designs are vastly different than consumer centric offerings. The GPU is said to measure around 600 millimeters squared and will utilize the TSMC 4 nanometer process node, which is an optimized version of TSMC's 5 nanometer and 5 node designed for the green team. The NVIDIA Lovelace AD102 GPU will feature up to 12 GPC graphics processing clusters. This is an increase of 70% versus GA102, which features only seven GPCs. Each GPU will consist of six TPCs and two SMs, which is the same configuration as the existing chip. Each SM, which is stands for streaming multiprocessor, will house four subcores, which is also the same as the GA102 GPU. What's changed is the FP32 and the INT or INT32 core configuration. Each subcore will include 128 FP32 units, but combined FP32 plus INT32 units or INT32 units will go up to 192. This is because the FP32 units don't share the same subcore as the IN32 units. The 128 FP32 cores are separate from the 64 INT cores or 32 cores. So in total, each subcore will consist of 128 FP32 plus 64 INT32 units for a total of 192 units. Each SM will have a total of 512 FP32 units plus 256 INT32 units for a total of 768 units. And since there are a total of 24 SM units to per, per GPC, we are looking at 12,288 FP32 units and 6,144 INT32 units for a total of 18,000 432 cores. Each SM will also include two wrap schedules, 32 thread per clock for 64 wraps per SM. This is a 50% increase on the cores and a 30% increase in wraps and threads versus the GA102. Moving over to the cache, this is another segment where NVIDIA has given a big boost over the existing Ampere GPUs. The Ada Lovelace GPU will pack 192 kilobytes of L1 cache per SM, an increase of 50% over Ampere, still way short compared to RX 7000 series, by the way. That's a total of 4.5 megabytes of L1 cache on top uh, on the top 8102 GPU. The L2 cache will be increased to 96 megabytes as mentioned in the leaks. This is a 16 times increase over the Ampere GPU and hosts just six megabytes of L2 cache. The cache will be shared across the GPU. Finally, we have 
the ROPS, which are also increased to 32 per GPC, an increase of two times over Ampere. You are looking at up to 384 ROPS on the next gen flagship versus the just 12, 112 on the fastest Ampere GPU, the RTX 3090 Ti. There are also going to be the latest fourth gen Tensor and third generation RT ray tracing cores infused on the Ada Lovelace GPUs, which will help boost DLSS ray tracing performance to the next level. Overall, the Ada Lovelace AD102 GPU will offer two GPCs, 50% more cores, 50% more L1 cache, 16 times more L2 cache, double the ROPS, and a fourth gen Tensor and third gen ray tracing cores. Do note that clock speeds, which are said to be between two and three gigahertz range, aren't into aren't taken into the equation so they will play a major role in improving the per core performance versus ampere the nvidia rtx 4090 ti and 4090 are expected to be the only two chips powered by the top 8102 gpu which has been detailed above as we saw with the rtx 3090 ti and the rtx 3090 both will feature different SKUs on the same chip the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 Ti is going to be the full FAT configuration with all of the 144 SMs enabled for a total of 18,432 CUDA cores. The GPU will come packed with 96 megabytes of L2 cache and a total of 384 ROPs, which is simply insane, is what the article says. That's their opinion. It's not a lot of L2 cache compared to the RX 7000, in my humble opinion. As for memory specs, the GeForce RTX 30 or 4090 Ti is expected to rock 24 gigabytes, and this is what we care about for mining, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X capacities that might come at a faster 24 gigabits per second speed across a 384-bit bus interface, which should provide up to 1.152 terabytes a second of bandwidth. So we're talking about quite a bit more like a was that i don't know 10 not quite a bit more that's really only like what 15 percent more than the current top end 3090 ti now all these boosted specifications will result in a higher power draw too and the flagship is expected to operate at a tbp total board power of around 600 watts now, for 600 watts, a single 16-pin Gen 5 connector should be enough, but most of the custom variants will definitely end up utilizing dual Gen 5 connectors since AIBs don't necessarily stay within spec, and even the slightest of factory overclocks will push the total board power above 600 watts. And if you're looking at this for mining, especially mining algorithms that are memory intensive, you're only getting a 15% increase in the potential bandwidth right if it hits the if it hits the 24 gigabits per second speed on the gddr6x you're only talking about a 15 percent improvement there while having a 50 percent increase in power consumption potentially right and yes the memory will be using more power because it's being clocked higher and that's going to be kind of a problem we have also seen an alleged NVIDIA RTX 4090 Ti heatsink and cooler shroud, which hints at the use of a beefier cold plate that provides coverage for both the GPU and memory dies, along with an overall larger structure. We talked about this last week. The leaked cooler is a Founders Edition design, and judging by how big it looks, the AIB models will end up being vastly bigger and may even end up with a quad slot design from all the partners. The 4090 is going to be cut down, a cut down configuration with 126 SMs enabled for a total of 16,128 CUDA cores. The GPU might also cut down the L2 cache a bit, while the ROP count will definitely be lower due to the lower number of GPCs. As for clocks, expect the non-TI model to come at slightly reduced speeds, but still fast enough versus the 3090 Ti. As for memory specs, the 4090 is also expected to run the GDDR6X capacities, but at a slower 21 gigabit per second speed across a 384 bit bus. This will provide, of course, one terabytes a second of bandwidth. This means essentially you will have 3090 Ti mining performance. 
albeit with a higher TGP of 450 watts. So 4090 is not looking that enticing either for mining, of course, once again, memory specific algorithms, depending on how these function uh, on other algorithms, though, things could get really interesting, things like Flux, things like Ravencoin, so on. I'm just not that excited about these for mining because they seem expensive, they seem power hungry, and they didn't get enough memory boost for me to be extremely interested in them, and they're not doing anything innovative. So why does that set it apart from the RX 7000 series? Because the RX 7000 series at least intrigues me from an architectural design with the multi-chip modules and the infinity cache boosting the potential memory bandwidth up to 1.7 terabytes a second. Of course, that probably won't be applicable for mining because that probably won't be utilized. However, it's just a more interesting release as opposed to what Nvidia is doing, which is throw more power at it and burn everybody's house down. That's how it looks like in the competition right now to me. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited more for Ada Lovelace or more for Radeon 7000 series? Now, you know what will not be a game changer is the GTX 1630, at least for mining, because unfortunately we aren't getting a great bus. This is a very tiny bus. I do not like little buses. I cannot lie. We now have almost full details on the upcoming new entry level GPU. We have been provided with the specs and launch date for the GTX 1630. NVIDIA's first GTX 30 model, not GT. This card will be based on the GTX 1650 model with some tweaks, of course. Some, some quote, necessary cutbacks. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1630 will be based on the 12 nanometer Turing TU117-150 GPU. It carries different specs than the GTX 1650 TU117-300. We are looking at even fewer cores and reduced memory bus. The GTX 1630 will ship with 512 CUDA cores, which is half of what the full GPU offers. Furthermore, the card will feature a 64-bit memory bus, which is again half of the full 128-bit config. The GTX 1630 will feature a much higher boost clock than the 1650 series. According to our information, the GPU clock goes up to 1800 MHz. Interestingly, this might not, or this might be the reason why the TDP has not been reduced and remains at 75 watts. So you're basically getting less cores at a higher clock, same power consumption, and a tiny, tiny little bus. The card will feature 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory clocked at 12 gigabits per second. This means that the maximum theoretical speed will be 96 gigabytes per second, not a huge downgrade compared to the GTX 1650 with the GDDR5 memory, the original SKU, but that's only half of what the GDDR6 model offers. NVIDIA has set the launch date for May 31st. This probably means we will be hearing some news next week at Computex Keynote. The pricing has not yet been confirmed. So basically, as you can see here, if we compare it across to a 1650, you know, you're getting a small memory bus, you're getting slower memory, or well, not, not slower memory, but slower memory than other GDDR6 or whatever. Uh, you're only getting four gigabytes of it. Total bandwidth, you know, 96 gigabytes per second, even if it could mine ETH, which it can't because of the memory configuration, you're probably not going to be getting that much hash rate, right? So maybe like a quarter of the bandwidth of like a 3060 or something like that. So, or a 3060 Ti, somewhere around there. Yeah. Anyways, what does that come out to? 15 mega hash a second if it had enough memory on board for it but it's interesting that we have a 30 series that does have gddr6 because previously you would see like ddr3 in a 1030 for example or something along those lines if it's cheap enough and there's some other algos that can mine the high core clock could make it interesting in some algorithms because of the cheap price, I'll probably pick one up and do some testing for you guys. 
I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.